Hey, Justin. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, uh, is it all right if we just get into the interview here, or do you want me? Yeah, yeah, go for it, man. So, you're now with the Rockies. You've been up and down this season, but you're with them now. And all this journey for you had to start somewhere. So, when did you start playing baseball and getting into the game? Just when I was younger, you know, four and a half, five years old, kind of that that age where you can start playing t-ball. Mm-hmm. And some, I remember playing t-ball as a kid. I was born in Chicago, and uh, I, we had these awful pink jerseys, but that's oh, okay. how I fell that's in love fun. with the game. Uh, so you were born in Panama, it says on Google. Is that true? That is correct. So when did you end up moving to Jacksonville? Oh, it was actually only after a couple of years. Um, I was born there. We moved and then I just go back and visit, you know, from time to time. Mm-hmm. So you started playing college ball at JU before you transferred to Daytona State College. Uh, when did you make that? So what led you to make that move and how did it affect your career? Um, honestly, I was, so I went to JU as a, a hitter and a pitcher. And then when I got to JU, I was only pitching and I still wanted to hit. So you know, I took my chances to leave there and go to a junior college to keep hitting. But then, you know, obviously the pitching thing worked out better. So um, as far as like the second part of your question, I really think deciding to go to junior college was probably one of the better decisions as far as the way my career went because of just the change, you know, to have that change and knowing that like I'm leaving a four year university to go to a junior college. Like I knew that I had to put in even more work to try to get back to another four-year school, which, you know, obviously I ended up getting drafted that year instead. Yeah, and it worked out really well for you when you made that switch to Daytona. You played really well. You throw 100 in sidearm, which is crazy. You don't see that often. Uh, and this, of course, led the to the Rockies taking you in the 12th round, as you mentioned there. So this had to be an amazing moment for you, getting drafted. Could you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, um, I think my dad was, he was more excited than I was when, uh, you know, when they drafted me, he's jumping all over the place, and I was kind of shell-shocked, you know, like, you know, every kid's dream to, to be able to say that they play professional baseball, and I just kind of knew that, all right, you know, we made that step, now it's time to look forward, you know, to the next step and keep getting better. So, how did that transfer from junior college baseball to ending up playing professional, how did that go for you, and... You know, were there some challenges that went along with that? Yeah, definitely, because, you know, I'm coming from a junior college where the talent, you know, isn't the best sometimes, you know, playing schools up in the Northeast or whatever. But now, you you know, you go into professional baseball and you're facing, you know, the leadoff hitter from Vanderbilt or the four-hole hitter from LSU. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those guys – those guys are used to playing in front of 20,000 people or whatever and, you know, like SEC baseball, stuff like that. So, you know, coming from a junior college and going to play at that, you know, against that kind of level of talent, definitely got to be on your A game. Yeah, so you progressed through the minor leagues at a pretty steady rate, but unfortunately uh, and you ended up getting suspended for unknowingly taking a performance-enhancing substance. But, however, during that time, you started coaching at Rip City Baseball here in Jacksonville. So, what was that time like for you? And if, I read a few 18U kids actually tried to hit off you. So, did any of them end up getting a hit there? No, no, they didn't. <laughs> but uh, coaching with Rip City, it's it's been such, like, an important part of where I'm, I, where I'm at now. You know, being, being able to make it to the big league and say I'm a big leaguer. But, you know the game got taken away from me in 2020 and then I had an opportunity to coach. So you can kind of see, you know, the symbolism there of like, all right, the game got taken away from me, but now I have an opportunity to, you know, to give back to the game and to try to teach these kids, you know, the same game that I grew up playing and try to make them better, you know, better kids on and off the field. And, you know, I used that experience and it helped me myself, you know, like I learned from that. I learned from, being able to coach kids from eight years old to 18 and you know you just 
I learn more about myself as a person and how to be a better person and all that, you know, through those kids and being able to coach them because they were such an awesome group, all of them. And I just learned so much about myself and the game, you know, being able to coach it. So it was a, uh, it was definitely important in, in my development to be able to experience that. Yeah, you said in some interviews just how you formed some really special bonds there. And a few kids, there was a eight-year-old with autism that I had read about that you got along really well with. Um, so after four years in the minors and that whole experience, you finally got called up. And your first career strikeout victim was none other than Eduardo Escobar, one of the best hitters in the NL West. So can you walk us through that at bat and, you know, the rest of your first appearance there? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, the juices are flowing, the adrenaline's there. Um, I wasn't, I actually wasn't as nervous as I thought I would be. I was just, I was excited. So I, you know, I walked the first guy on four pitches, but that was, again, like that didn't deter me. I didn't get nervous. Or I was like, oh no, like, is this going to be a bad outing? Like, I just knew like I had to go out there and have fun and just let him hit it. Like, you know, I got called up for a reason and I was going to be able to, you know, make the best of that opportunity by, you know, trying to let him hit it. So it was, it was fun. It was, it was good adrenaline filled experience. Yeah. So you're showing a ton of potential so far with the Rockies. You uh, went back down to Albuquerque, but then actually got called up, I believe a few days before our first interview was scheduled. Um, so how did that process end up going for you? You know, you got called up, but, uh, you know, ending up going down probably was a little tough for you. Um, but then, you know, how did that all transpire? What was that journey like? You know, it, outside looking in, it kind of, you see a guy get sent down and, you know, sometimes it's performance based. Sometimes it's just, you know, someone a veteran coming off the injured list, so they just need room. So, you know, they send a guy down. Of course, they're going to send a young guy down. But just knowing, you know, like like I'm the next guy or I'm possibly the next guy up. Like, mm -hmm. you, you know, like you said, I got sent down but then got called back up. It's like knowing that they trust me to be that guy whenever they need me. You know, it's, 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 a, good, it's a good build of confidence to know that, all right, if I go down to AAA – I just got to continue to work on my craft and know that, you know, if they need someone that I'll be ready for them. Yeah. And you're back up with the Rockies now and you've had a lot happen, obviously in your pro career, but looking back on it all, what have been some of your favorite moments so far? You know, um, having, having my family come out to my, my second appearance was, was big for me because Obviously, you know, when I got called up, it was about two hours before the game. Wow. And, yeah, so we were in Arizona, and my family's back in Jacksonville. So, obviously, they weren't going to have time to make it out. But, uh, luckily, I have an apartment in Arizona, and that's where my wife uh, lives. So, it worked out perfectly. She was about to leave to go to work, so she was able to make my debut. So, it was really special to have her there for my debut, and then that next game, I um uh, my family came out. So those those were two really big moments for me. All right. So that's all the questions I got for you on your career. But I always like to enter, uh, end out an interview with some fun would you rather questions. Would you be up for that? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So getting to know you a little bit off the field with this one, your personality. Are you a dog person or a cat person? So I grew up a dog person and I absolutely love dogs. My parents have five labs back home. And then I got married, and my wife's a cat person, and we live in an apartment, so we couldn't really get a dog. And just with me traveling and her working as a nurse, uh, it wouldn't really be fair to get a dog. So right now I'm a cat person, I guess, because we have two of them. <laughs> yeah. And so would you rather play video games or watch a TV show? Uh, definitely play video games. What, what type of games do you play? Um, I kind of mix it up, like... I play right now. I'm playing a lot of MLB The Show, but mm -hmm. you know, Call of Duty, Fortnite, all that. What's it like to have yourself in MLB The Show? You know, is that fun playing with yourself? Yeah, it's it's weird. You know, like uh, like I said, the same thing as getting drafted. Like, you know, it's every kid's dream. So it's like to see me on a video game. It's it's still surreal every every time I play with myself or whatever. It's like that's me on a video game. All right, and this is the question I ask everyone. It gets mixed results here. 
Um, but would you rather eat Italian or Mexican food? Oof, that's a tough one. Um, probably Italian. I gotta go with Italian. I think I just love pasta, so oh, yeah. but I also love tacos. But I think I'd have to go with pasta for me. Yeah, my mom makes this amazing spaghetti, so that's what keeps me Italian there. Oh yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. I had a blast talking with you. Yeah, awesome, man. You did great. I appreciate the call. Yep, thank you, and good luck with the rest of your season.